I think we go pretty parabolic. Now, we don't have as much leverage this time, so it probably... Hello everyone, today Mark Yusko talks about the Grayscale BTC ETF, other crypto news, and discusses the macro data. Remember to give us a thumbs up if you find our content valuable. Your support fuels our passion to keep delivering top-notch videos. And hey, why not spread the knowledge? Share our videos with your crypto-curious friends, family, and fellow enthusiasts. And look, here's the thing. Fine, you wanna you wanna regulate by enforcement? Okay. Not not really a good way to run an agency. And but we've had other agencies do it. We've had the FDA do it for a while. We've had the um uh a couple other you know, that are blank I'm blanking on, but we've 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 seen it, right? We've seen very political people do very political things. The problem is if you're regulating a law or a rule and someone doesn't comply with it, you're on pretty solid ground, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, if you regulate air, like, well, we were going to pass this rule, so you should have known we were going to pass this rule and therefore you violated it. That, that's kind of what they did with BlockFi and, and Voyager and those guys are like, well, you violated this law, like, but but you didn't say it was a law. You actually said the opposite. You said they weren't securities. Well, but you should have known we were going to change our mind. Oh my God, really? Um, okay, so that seems destined for failure, which we've seen number of failures. But the what? what but what the SEC did here, which is just, and they're just getting smacked every which way from Sunday. If you basically take a bad position against an established law, a judge, unless, unless you can handpick the judge and like we see in billions, if you can pay them off and do it, unless you can do that, you're in trouble because right. a good, honest, independent judge is going to do their job. And they're going to say, no. And we saw that in the Ripple case. We saw it in this case. We saw it in the Uniswap case. So thankfully, we got some good, honest judges, which they do still exist. Um, but I, I still believe, right, that the bigger powers that are controlling this particular person who's on this enforcement kick, I still think he's kind of the, the pawn, the tool, right? He was installed into this position and he's like, okay, now I got to go do these things that they're telling me to do, which is okay. Um, and there's probably some of his own personal stuff in there too. But, but ultimately, I don't think those powers that be are done fighting. And and to your, I think your, your insight on custody is really, really important because in the early days, you know, Jay Clayton would get up there on the stage and he and I actually did a panel on this together. And he would say, it's about market manipulation. We can't approve this because these markets are manipulated. And I was like, wow, you mean more manipulated than the penny stocks and and the low float stocks, like, I don't know if you've been following this VIN fast mm -mm. EV company. Oh my God, this is crazy. This, this is a EV manufacturer from Vietnam. It's 98% owned by this Vietnamese conglomerate and they floated 2%. This stock has just gone totally parabolic. They've sold, they've, they haven't, I don't even know if they sold cars yet. They, they produce scooters and they sold a bunch of scooters, e-scooters. And they've produced, I think, and that's in air quotes, 11,000 vehicles. Yeah. And I don't even know if they've actually sold them yet. Maybe they have, I, I don't know. But this thing has like a $60 billion market cap, Michael. And, and, I, and I know it's bad, because my nephew 
texted me, hey, do you know about this company? I'm like, oh God, stop. No, do not buy it, run away, don't short it because it, it could double before it goes down 98%, but it's going to go down 98%. So that's where we are. So if you want to talk about market manipulation, just look at your own you know, market. Somebody approved that IPO. That is a US IPO of a total sham. I won't say fraud, but it's a sham. I mean, it's a Ponzi. And there was a company like that in 2000. There was a husband and wife that a consulting company and they own 99% and they listed 1%. And every day that 1% would turn over like 400 to 500 times in the chat rooms and all this. And they would just sell another 1% every day. And they made billions. And then the stock went to zero because there was no, there was no there there. And so if that can get approved, why can't this, a spot ETF, a Bitcoin, is about as safe as any spot commodity ETF or, or mutual fund that we've ever had? Let, let's try to guess a little bit here at the future and how this is going to play out. Let's just assume that ETFs will be approved. So yep. the pertinent questions to me feel like, one, I'd love to understand how you see the price impact here. So when this when this decision became public, Bitcoin ripped up, right? Went from something like 25 to 28, roughly within that sort of ballpark, basically completely retraced all of those gains so far. So we'd love to get your your thoughts on the impact. price. Well, impact. It's, it's, you know, a little bit of buy the rumor, sell the news. There wasn't any news. So that's not it. I mean, it was, it was buy the rumor, but here's the thing. And... We've, we've seen this movie before. We know exactly how it goes. GBTC, right? Big winners this week. The last run, when we went from 10,000 to 60,000 the first time, was all GBTC, right? GBTC got to $20 billion. And the reason the price went up so much is what people forget, the vast majority of Bitcoin is either not movable, right? It's in a multi-sig and there's some problem or, or whatever. Lost or stolen. Hodler. I'm not selling for anything, right? And so it's round numbers. Like this is one of those 85% of all statistics are made up on the spot. <laughs> I'm going to argue 80-ish percent is that. And so 20% is kind of the free float. So back in the last cycle, you know, the market cap was a couple hundred billion. So if a couple hundred billion, 10, 20% of that is 40 billion. If you get 10 billion of flow on a $40 billion free float, price is going to go ballistic. And it did. And remember, it was fast. We went from 10 to 60 fast. And, you know, then Elon came out with his tweet and it went down and then it recovered back up to 69 or whatever. And that was the end on the day of the futures. So this time, and, and I give all credit to, to Eric, who I, you know, we were going to have join us today, but Eric Buckley is a great analyst. And, and he did the math, right? He, he tracks the money that's in the kind of, RIA and the people who use mutual funds and ETFs. And there's about $30 trillion. Okay. It's a lot of money. So when, and I'm going to say when, when the ETF is approved, money's coming in, right? Right now, UBS can't do it. Merrill Lynch can't do it. All of these big RIAs can't do it. As soon as that ETF's approved, bang, they'll all have to ascend. So let's say 0.1%, mm. okay, 0.1%, $30 billion. $30 billion, so today market cap's around half a trillion. 20% of that's $100 billion. 30 on 100, that's a similar amount, 10 versus 40. I think we go pretty parabolic. Now, we don't have as much leverage this time. 
So it probably doesn't do a 5X, but a 3X, not, not even a hard move. But that's 0.1%. If 1%, right? My hashtag get off zero. If you go from zero to one, 1%, which is not a lot. And had you done that five years ago, your portfolio would have compounded at 200 basis points better. So people are going to see that math and Barry and others are going to put that out there. 1%, that's 300 billion. 300 billion on 100 billion of free float. So GBTC, what's the future there? Because one, there's $630,000 worth of uh, 630,000 Bitcoin sitting within that fund right now. It has been probably a pretty unhappy 630K Bitcoin because they've been sitting at a discount to NAV for a long period of time. They've been locked up in this closed end fund and they've been paying 2%. So A, if this was were to get transitioned to an ETF, what do you think Barry does with the fees? Right now he's clipping 2% management fees. He probably have to bring that down to 35 basis points. Do you think that he does that? Two, do you think that Bitcoin moves? Is this, is this way of 50? Yeah. Is this supply that's going to come online then? Do you, should people be worried about 630K worth of Bitcoin? Fair, oh man, that's a great question. So um, if he can't get it converted before the BlackRock, bad. Yes, that will get liquidated in 10 heartbeats because the only place people... Now, at UBS, you can't even own GBTC. Like, I've tried, and you can't. So, but there are a whole bunch of people at the independent RIAs and other channels that do own GBTC, um, you know, Schwab and, and the other things. And if you, can, if you can get an ETF at 35 basis points, I, I don't remember what BlackRock fee said they were going to charge, but uh, in regards to be less than 2%, you will sell GBTC so fast, uh, it'll make your head spin. So they're in a tough place because it's kind of like John Goodfriend, which was aptly named because he had no friends at the time with long-term capital. Um, He needed friends and they all abandoned him. And, um, you know, so that's, that's, Barry needs to be able to convert either simultaneously or before the first ETF gets approved. And as I understand it, the court case didn't do that. The court case just said, now you can have your application get back in line and they can't just say, I'm not gonna look at it. And it's gonna be so far behind. I I think he's got a, a tough one. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Mark Yesko. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.